so what we what we discussed in our previous video basically really that how to take a particular you know idea a notion an idea and you know make it mathematically rigorous actually so how to make it mathematically uh, rigorous and then we saw actually that the recipe of making an idea or a notion some concept mathematically rigorous is really to precisely express it in the terms of sets actually so if you can express this in the terms of sets you know that idea in the terms of sets you have made that idea precisely rigorous now i would like to take your attention towards you know a little bit of history of math actually that what was happening really at the end of the 90th century and really in in, in the 20th century okay so what was happening so in, in in that time period in the area of mathematics was almost like a big project actually and you know it was like a movement okay and that movement was a movement to turn entire mathematics so all of the existing math at that time into what you call rigorous mathematics and what do you mean by rigorous mathematics is like expressing all of the existing maths in the terms of really sets okay now <clears throat> what was the mathematics for example that was existing at that times you know there was for example obviously algebra there was lots of geometry and you know you know there was calculus and much more actually okay the motivation really to making or turning the mathematics more and more rigorous really come from what you call the euclidean geometry actually okay you know euclidean geometry is really the the same geometry that you learn in your high schools or in your o levels actually really the plane geometry okay i mean if you if if you remember that okay like how the euclidean geometry or your plane geometry that you learned in your school was started so you start with for example some kind of um you know some kind of axiom section okay you really the unproved unproved statements some of the statements that you just take them for granted actually okay it's like what was say for example axioms in euclidean geometry that okay there are points and you know you put together points you can get lines you put together lines you can get planes and so on and so forth uh, if you take for example you know two points you can only pass you know one line through them so you know, there was there was a list of axioms basically that that you know uh, you learn when you start learning euclidean geometry and then you you know after based on these axioms okay you are may, maybe these axiomatic notions actually of point line and you know stuff like that you define you know new things you you define like angles and you define like you know different kind of things actually for example triangles and so on and so forth and once you define for example um, you know these angles and you know triangles and objects actually then you start you know carrying out the consequences of these axioms and definitions actually in other words that using the axioms and definitions you start proving like theorems actually okay you start proving like theorems that okay if you have for example two lines are intersecting at a point then you know really the opposite angles are going to be equal um say for example if you take a triangle the sum of the all angles within that triangle is 180 degree so these these all of these are really the theorems okay so in euclidean geometry how do you start you start from axioms then you define some terms and then using you know both of these you carry out the consequences of you know axioms and definitions actually which which basically are the theorems actually the question mainly was that the can you can you do can we do 
can we do really same thing, same thing for other mathematics actually, other maths that was existing at that time actually. Can you mimic this pattern of starting with some axioms and you know definitions and then proving the theorems about or carrying out the consequences of those axioms and definitions actually. Can we do something similar in, for example, other maths actually? The answer answer is yes, actually. So people people did a lot of, you know, for example, work in say calculus actually. You know, they 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 tried to give um, the axiomatic foundations to to number theory. Okay. I mean I mean if 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 you have taken for example a course on a rigorous course on a rigorous calculus actually you know that okay you can start with for example you know the piano axioms okay and you can construct what you call set of natural numbers and then you can study the properties of natural numbers uh, and then using the equivalence relation you know, some kind of equivalence relation, you can construct what you call set of integers and then study the properties and prove theorems about the set of integers. And then using another equivalence relation, you can define, for example, rational numbers, okay? Um, and, you know, uh, carry out the consequences about the rational numbers and then real numbers, then really sequences, okay? And then using sequences, you define limit. And once you have limit, then you can define what you call derivatives. Okay. And you can, you know, define integrals actually. Okay. And carry out and prove the theorems about it actually. Okay. So it's like starting from axiomatic foundation and creating the entire, what do you call calculus. Okay. Like this was done really also in the similar period actually. Now, <clears throat> now, like when we say actually that, you know, you are making the calculus rigorous actually, what you are actually saying is that can I describe, for example, natural numbers or each of numbers as a set actually? Can I describe say integers as a set? are rational numbers as a set and can we prove the theorems about them actually, okay? So like this was going on um, in, in the late 90th and 20th century in, in, in mathematics actually. So people were trying to make the mathematics rigorous. They were trying to express, express all of maths, all of maths, okay, uh, in terms of sets in terms of set section, okay? And, you know, starting from axioms and having definitions and proof theorem section, okay? Now, and, and, and that's really is the reason actually that, I mean, you, you must be wondering actually that, okay, now when you learn new and new mathematics, you know, you learn, for example, say linear algebra, you learn, I don't know, you know, uh, you know group theory, you learn, for example, you know, any any of any of almost any kind of mathematics actually, you know, everything starts are expressed is expressed in the terms of sets. Actually. You know why why there is so much emphasis on sets? Okay, because this is really the consequence of uh, this 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 movement that I talked about basically was initiated in 19th and 20th century to turn the entire mathematics into the rigorous mathematics. Okay, now what, and, and, and really the topology is also consequence of this movement actually. Okay, so that topology was also, you know, born, you know, or developed actually, okay, developed as, as, as the consequence of this movement actually, as consequence of, of, of this movement. Okay, and what were what was the thing? Okay, so obviously you know, uh, if if the topology is the consequence of this movement, then there must be something that people were trying to make the rigorous. Okay, and that thing that people were trying to you know make rigorous and 
you know, that resulted what you call uh, the subject of topology was really continuity. Okay, was really continuity. So it's like, can we describe the continuity rigorously in the terms of the sets and carry out the consequences of it actually? Um, you, you might say that, okay, like, you know, we know the continuity that what is the meaning of a continuous function between two, what do you call, uh, uh, you know, say from set of real numbers to the set of real numbers actually. We, and, 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 and we have, for example, also a rigorous definition of say, for example, epsilon delta type definition actually, okay? But, but what if, if you have an abstract space X Okay, which is not necessarily R actually. So it's an abstract set. And you have an abstract, what do you call Y? Okay, then what is the meaning of having a continuity between these two sets? Can we describe this continuity? You know, can we make this continuity rigorous? Can we describe this continuity or also in the terms of what you call abstract sets. Really, it was this thinking, our such thinking that basically, you know, gave rise or gave birth to the, to the, to the idea of topology and, um, and, and really the, the area of the subject of the topology actually that because people was obsessed with continuity. And, and I would like to mention actually that one of the trouble, for example, you know, uh, defining the continuity here is basically that, you know, you need the notion of distance actually. Okay, I'll let her talk about that, that how the continuity is depending on distance. But if you want to define, for example, a continuous function of real number, there is no escape from distance. But imagine you have the sets in which you know, it doesn't make sense to talk about what you call distances. Can we still define continuity? So it's like, can we make the notion of continuity independent of the idea of distance? And the answer is yes. And, you know, in trying to find the answer of this question, basically, you know, the idea or maybe the theory of topology emerge specifically the general topology actually. So in our next discussion, you know, we, we are really, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about basically that, okay, you know, what is the bigger picture of the topology? I hope that you understood that the reason for discussing uh, basically uh, this idea of being rigorous and uh, doing mathematical, you know, uh, turning mathematics into the rigorous mathematics in the terms of sets was basically to tell you that basically the, uh, the topology is also a consequence of making the notion of the continuity rigorous, okay, and more general actually. And that was, that was a very powerful kind of, um, uh, you know, idea actually. So yeah.